Hello everyone, it's Chris with Expat Theory. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. appreciate you being here. Thought today I would kind of do a two-part kind of uh, video here. First part, I want to kind of, I don't know, maybe reiterate or kind of go over what my channel's about for a lot of the new subscribers that I've gotten. Maybe they haven't... Uh, gone back through my videos and kind of picked up on uh, some of the information and then uh, second part of you know I thought maybe I'd talk more about what's going on with me currently um, so let's start out at the beginning here for those of you who haven't gone back and looked at uh, my previous videos and um, my library there I basically started this channel back in 2019 prior to getting into the trucking industry <clears throat> I had come to a point where I realized that I was not ready for retirement I was working a dead-end job that didn't pay crap and I had nothing a uh, couple hundred bucks in the bank a uh, car breaking down on me all the time um, about 20 something grand in the hole for things that I owed and I was going nowhere fast and it was a shocker to the system because I'm thinking oh crap I'm gonna end up doing the same things that my parents did which was trying to survive on Social Security I, I really did not want that I did not want to face that and it shook me to my core I said you know what I've got to do something different I've got to get out of my comfort zone I've got to shake things up you can't keep doing the same thing every day and expect a different outcome so I walked away from a job that I've been at for eight years I got rid of everything I owned pretty much uh, basically if it did not fit in my car it did not go with me so I got rid of everything I went to truck driving school I signed a contract with CRST and I had to work for them for a minimum of 10 months to satisfy my my contract obligation and uh, I went driving with them for I was ended up driving for them for about three years and the first 20 months was team driving um, I'm really kind of proud of that you know the average team driving situation typically lasts shorter than 60 days people don't get along very well especially when you put them in a little tiny box like this in a truck and they have to live together and you're trying to do a job that's already you know has its own stresses and and makes you tired a lot that is one thing about trucking that people don't really talk about it does make you tired I mean you're you're dealing with 24 7 365 jet lag because you're always moving you're always in a shaking moving vehicle and I don't think people talk about how tired they feel doing over the road but I feel pretty proud that I I pulled off 20 months with the same co-driver and I'm very fortunate that I got Pablo as my co-driver um, he's old school military uh, marine I'm old school military Air Force and you know we were like everybody else there were times we want to punch each other in the face but we had a job to do we had a paycheck that we needed to earn and he taught me a lot of things and I really appreciated him um, we drove together for 20 months which is 
way in excess of anybody else that I've, you know, heard of. I know there's a few people that say there's teams out there that are married or whatever. <clears throat> of course, that's, you know, a whole different animal. But two guys that never met before got thrown into a truck, and they, they lasted a long time, uh, and we made a lot of money. So very fortunate. And uh, we kind of parted ways because I actually went to a different department within CRST and went dedicated not only for a little bit more money, but also the opportunity for me to kind of spread my wings and go solo. And that lasted for almost a year. And then, unfortunately, CRST lost that contract. <clears throat> I ended up doing uh, regional driving, and it wasn't good. The, the management team in the Louisville, Kentucky office for CRST is uh, atrocious. There's another way to really say it. They were just terrible. So uh, I ended up parting ways with CRST uh, after about three years driving for them. I came to GP Transco about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Um, been with them, I guess, what, 13 months now, 14 months now-ish. And, you know... They're not a bad company. They're not a bad company. They're not the best company, you know. Um, they're a mid-size, still smaller-size company. Uh, they got. They keep trying to grow, but they, I think the last I heard was they had like 540 trucks or something in that in that range. Um, but obviously, I've been here for over a year, and I'm still here. So you know, it's not it's not bad. Or I wouldn't be here. And uh, the whole idea behind getting into the trucking industry was I knew that I would actually get a paycheck. Because <laughs> I was not making no money at CVS. Uh, after eight years of being at CVS, I was making $26,000 a year gross. Uh, if I cashed in one of my weeks of vacation, I could maybe crack 27000 <laughs> Uh I've almost tripled that income level getting into trucking uh, it was a little rough ro rocky start but you know it it's gotten good and I, I've been doing fairly well um, fixing the income problem has done wonders I basically paid off all of my debt um, I all my credit cards are I keep them at zero uh, the only debt per se that I have is I bought a new car back in July and I got me something nice that I really like and enjoy and it has lots of room for me and I really like it a lot but it it is an expensive vehicle so it has a fairly hefty price tag but I can afford it now and it's not stopping me from uh, dedicating a lot of my income towards savings because I figured out the plan for me and that that is the key component that I have been trying to harp on ever since I started this channel was the idea and the concept of a plan you know a lot of people talk about their dreams for the future and that's all they are they're they're smoke and mirrors their pipe dreams you, they don't mean nothing it isn't until you take that dream and turn it into a plan and actually start taking steps on that plan to make things real and if a knucklehead like me can go from broke 530 something credit score crappy vehicle don't own jack you know to being financially healthy I paid off all my debts keep my debts at zero my credit score went over 800 then I bought the car <laughs> dropped back down to the 770s but still 770 is 
way better than 530. Um, I've got about 25,000 in a Roth IRA. I've got 57,000 plus in my stock market account. And I got a couple grand set back for emergencies in my bank account. That is a whole different world than what I was in four years ago. So, and it's because I, I made a plan. I made a plan and started taking the steps that I needed to take to get where I want to be. Now, my plan is to retire overseas and become an expat. Uh, specifically, probably is going to be, I have to admit, it's probably going to end up being the Philippines. Uh, I've been looking hard at Cambodia. I've been looking hard at uh, Thailand and the Philippines. And for a while now, I've been saying Phnom Penh and Cambodia, and now not so sure. The Philippines does hold edge on, on a lot of little categories that are important. But the point being is I made my plan for retirement overseas where I could actually take my income and live a little bit better of a life, you know, not be as stressed about making my bills because living off of Social Security and then I'm going to augment that with money coming from my stock market. Um, it's difficult, you know, and it's so expensive here. And I can live a good lifestyle overseas for far less. So that that kind of came to me to be my resolution of, of where I'm going to go for re retirement because I, I was not going to make it. I was not going to do well just sitting around trying to collect Social Security. So that's kind of been the, the whole basis for the channel was to document going from working at CVS and all of that to getting to my retirement and how I'm working the plan. And along the way, I've tried to throw out as much good information as I can. I've tried, I've talked about trucking. I've talked about different destinations. I've talked about stock market, you know, and investing. And, you know, I'm just trying to document all the important things that occur until I get to my retirement in 2030. When I get to 2030 and I can actually retire and start using my uh, income that I've built up, then I can start really exploring uh, overseas where exactly I want to hang my hat and call home base but I still want to do travel. I still want to go there, but then travel out from my home base to other places. And when I get to that point, this channel will, will change in its concept. It'll, it, I don't want to focus on the trucking. I don't want to focus on the investing. Kind of want to talk about how I'm getting there. And then once I get there, it's going to pretty much change over to travel. You know, the places I go, the things I see, you know just give you more of a insight of what it's like over there so that's that um current events uh this year's been a little slow i'm not getting all the miles that i really want it's been rough january was a bad start um trying to make up money for my plan that i did not save in january so I'm kind of behind the eight ball on that. And I'm not getting huge amounts of miles to try and make big checks and kind of pay that back. So it's taking longer to catch up than I'd hoped for. And part of that is because of the economy. Part of it's because of the conditions of the trucking market. No, I, I can really control there. So I'm just doing the best I can with what I got at the moment. Uh, I'm not doing bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm still making money. I'm still trucking. I'm still doing it. But um, it's a little slower grind 
to do my catching up than I, I really want. Um, other than that, you know, things are going well. Every, you know, my investments are doing well. Um, you know, I, I really don't have a whole lot to complain about. I do struggle a little bit with content for you guys for this channel. I don't want to just kind of make content to make content. That doesn't really seem like a great idea to me, you know. Um, when I get on here, I want to be saying things that are important. I want to give information that matters. And I kind of don't want to turn it into a trucking channel. I mean, I could I could easily. I could, I could put in hashtags on all my videos and start talking about this company or that company and what it is in trucking and all that. And probably have five times as many followers and subscribers if I went that route. But that that isn't what my channel was about. And I don't I'm not shooting for monetization. You know, my money's gonna come from my own work and my own investments. I'm not looking to YouTube to fund me. So <clears throat> not really all that concerned about being monetized. And uh, I don't think I want to give up my my thought process and just change to try to make a buck. Um, so I think I'm going to keep true to my intention of this channel. Uh, I, I mean, everybody's kind of tempted to kind of, you know, if you can turn it into a money maker, why not? You know, but yeah, that just that was never my intention. So, you know, if I get subscribers, it just makes me feel validated that, you know, people are watching and listening. And I hope that maybe one day, someday, any day, that somebody will look at me and go, if that knucklehead can actually turn his life around, he made himself a plan and changed his life, shit, if he can do it, I can do it. I'm smarter than he is. You know, I hope, to, I really hope that happens. I really do. I honestly hope that maybe more than one person will, will look at it and go, you know what? This guy's a screwball. I can do way better than him. Boom. My whole channel is completely worthwhile. <laughs> Plus, I mean, to be honest with you, it's like a diary to me. I want to go be able to go back and look. I've gone back and watched my own videos. I mean, not trying to be narcissistic or anything, but it's good memories for me that I go back and watch through some of my videos and see the progress that I've made. So, to have somebody actually benefit from it, yeah, that, ma that makes it definitely worthwhile. And it really, that's what motivates me to continue doing videos. Because there's been many a times I've thought about just shutting the channel down. Because I, I don't want to just throw stuff out there to throw stuff out there, you know. I want people to actually hear what I'm saying and understand it and take it to heart and maybe do something different in their lives. You know, it doesn't have to be about trucking or anything like that. It's anything that you want. If you make a plan and work for it and, you know, even if you're taking baby steps to get there... I mean, eventually you're going to get there and you're going to get what you wanted because you made a plan to do it. A lot of people don't make plans, so they don't follow that. And everything that they want just stays out of reach because they have no way of working towards it. Uh, the other thing um, going on current, you know, other than current, uh, I have actually started talking to someone. Um a little excited about that, you know. It's not some uh, random person. It's actually a, a friend of a friend scenario. So I've I've met someone and I'm ch chatting online. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. <laughs> it's a good thing because they're a very nice person and I'm I'm enjoying their company, and uh, it's nice getting to know them. It's a bad thing because they're. 3,000 miles and six years away. 
really makes me want to hurry up and get there, you know. So it's kind of a double-edged sword for me, you know. <clears throat> I know that it's going to be a long time before I can actually get over there and, and meet anyone in person. Um, and six years is such a long time to chit-chat with somebody. Um, so it's kind of difficult on that end. But on the other end, it, it is really nice to meet nice people, you know, that I enjoy talking to and you know, I, I find fascinating and interesting. And uh, I, I'll admit I'm interested, you know, I'm very interested. And who knows, you know, I, I have never slammed the door on getting into a relationship or meeting somebody. I just always said that, you know, if that happens, it'd be nice. But, you know, my goal and focus remains the same. I am working really hard to get where I want to be. And, you know, I'm not going to let anything derail that. If I meet somebody who wants to get on board with what I'm doing, awesome sauce, you know. But I, um, I'm not going to let anybody uh, alter, change, or impede my progress. So, but so far, it's kind of nice. It's nice to meet somebody that's uh, attractive and interesting and, you know, fun to talk to. And, you know, well, gives a little positive spin to the daily grind, you know. So I'm enjoying that. And uh, I guess that's about it, really. There's not, not really much else. I mean, my day-to-day -day routine is pretty much the same. You know, I get up, drive deliver, stop, sleep, <laughs> eat in between. That's it. And I, that's another reason why it's making it a little difficult to come up with content. Um, I kind of feel like I've told you guys everything, you know? And the only difference now is, you know, where am I at today? And I've tried videos doing, you know, like landscapes of where I'm going and traveling and they didn't do very well. Um, I've tried talking about my expat theory about uh, retiring overseas. Eh, they don't do great. The only videos that really take off are when I start talking trash about, about a company or I start talking good about a company that everybody else hates or, you know, the whole trucking stuff. That seems to be the only area where I get a lot of attention. Eh. So be it, you know. But I don't really know what to get out here and tell you guys uh, when my day-to-day -day life pretty much is the same all the time, <clears throat> you know. I can tell you I, I get on my tablet. I love, I love my tablet, by the way. It's huge. It's a big old Galaxy 7. You know, I watch media on this and I YouTube and um, I get on there and watch TV shows and things like that you know I've got my phone which I'm using to record but you know I've got a laptop and I hardly ever use it but I've got all the electronics and stuff to keep myself busy you know I could talk about what TV shows I'm watching or stuff like that but you know, people aren't really gonna be interested in that you know so it's kind of, it is a little bit of a struggle for me to uh, find good things to talk about, to to uh, share with you guys. And, uh, you know, anytime anybody drops a comment down there and they, they want to know something, I, I obviously try to get, go into it because I want you guys to, you know, ask questions. And if I can answer it or give my opinion, absolutely I will. So... All right, with that being said, though, uh, if you know anybody who's interested in the content, please share it to them. Uh, if you like it, hit the like button, and uh, I hope I can get to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.